Hello, I'm Denise Schwab and I'm an Extension Beef Specialist for Northeast Iowa. And today I want to talk to you a little bit about controlling some of our costs by controlling waste. And anytime feed costs are high, we want to look at everything we can do to minimize waste and get as much of that feed into the cows as possible. When we talk about feed waste, we really think about two different types of waste. One is what we lose in the storage process. And we have some control over some of those factors, but the other one is what we lose at feeding time, and we have a lot of control over many of those factors. So we're going to split it up into those two sections today. One of the first things I want to address is silo management, because we see a, a potential for a great amount of waste or things that we can do to control waste in terms of the silo, particularly with bunker silos. And one of the things to think about is how do we manage that face to disturb as little as possible um, and still get the amount of feed out of there that we need. And one of the recommendations here that comes from Canada is to start at the bottom, take a chunk out of there, and then use your loaders to take a chunk at a time, trying to use at least 6 to 12 inches of that face every day. But again, we only use a part of that face. So once we disturb it, we don't disturb that area again until we've completely opened up all the rest of the face. So that's one recommendation in terms of face management on silos. And again, about 6 to 12 inches a day is what we'd like to use. Now, the reason we talk about silage is because we can have a lot of potential losses on our silos. And this is a study that looked at different types of structures, and, and it makes it easier for me to think about it in groups. So as we think about a stack, a pile, a bunker, anything that's uncovered, we're going to see somewhere in that range of about 30% waste. And that would be mostly what's coming off of the top of that pile as it's stored. If we think about those same type of units, but we make sure that we cover those piles or bunkers, we then drop about 10% of that waste and we're down to 20%. However, I'd argue with most of you that if your combine left 20 to 30% of the crop in the field, you probably wouldn't be very happy with it. So we want to think about what we can do to minimize that even more. And if we think about going to our bags, our uprights, our oxygen limiting silos, we get down to 10%. And it's going to be pretty hard to reduce that much below because you're going to have some moisture loss regardless when we're dealing with the wet product. So trying to think about covering that pile is going to drop us from 30 to 20%. Going with an airtight system is going to get us down to about 10% waste. And that's what comes in from the field and what actually gets delivered to the cattle. We see similar effects when we look at haylage, although many of us are putting our haylage in bags now, um, but we also can see some of those losses if we put them into bunkers. And when we put haylage into bunkers, well, and the same with silage, really getting a good pack is critical to get it very airtight. And that also impacts the density. So you look at this study, you can see as we get the density of that haylage product tighter or better packed, we reduce our dry matter losses from 20% down to 10%. So just helping to reinforce the fact that that good airtight pack is really critical in haylage as much as it is in silage. We don't have any feeds that have zero shrink, and so if you look even at our commercial feeds, um, feed mills and their dry feeds, they're still looking at somewhere under 1% shrink, and some of that is just in the delivery process, the handling, losing some of the fines, etc. So we're never down to zero. But a lot of times if we're looking at our dry commodities, our soybean meal, our chopped alfalfa, some of those things, we're still in that, oh, 5 to 10% loss that we get just from storing that or the shrink that's involved with that product as we handle it. With the alfalfa, you know, a lot of it depends on what are the conditions when we're chopping that dry hay. Um, do we have a lot of wind? Are we storing it someplace where there's some mud? So we can see some shrink loss there. Um, and, and can ran from 5 to 10%, so can start to add up. What I really want to point out is our wet and modified distillers, and this was where the product was weighed at the plant, taken to the farm, weighed into the storage system, and here we saw 2 to 3 percent from what you pay at the plant to what actually is delivered to the farm. And we'll see more waste and shrinkage with our wet products than we will with our dry products. When they took it and then stored that same product in the bag or in a bunker, and then weighed it into the feed wagons, here we were seeing between 7 and 17 percent storage waste or storage loss. So uh, anything we can do to reduce the amount of storage loss on our wet products is going to have even more impact on our feed systems. We might not think that that's a big deal until you start to look at costs. And here's an example. If we have our silage um, priced at $60 a ton as it's in the storage ready to be fed out, 
but we're looking at 20 or 30 percent waste, all of a sudden our cost for that feed goes from $60 a ton to what's actually delivered to the cattle to $85 a ton for delivery to the cattle. So even if we can reduce that down by 10 percent, we drop that feed cost from 85 a ton to 65 a ton. So it starts to add up in a big hurry as we're looking at feed wastage. The other thing we want to talk about then is managing that feed loss. So once it gets to the cattle, how much is being lost as the cattle are consuming it? And this is a study from Indiana that looked at several different types of feeding systems. One was looking at silage in a bunk or a tire, and they were showing between 1 and 5 percent waste. If you were to look at that feeding system and the cattle around it, you probably would not see any waste, but, but there is just a little bit there. Then as they looked at hay, hay losses, they looked at providing one day's supply of hay in some type of a feeding rack, so a round bale feeder or some kind of a feeding rack. And what they found there was 4.7 percent feed waste. Now if you were to look at it, it visually would not look like very much to us, but it doesn't take a lot of hay waste to mount to 5 percent. But when they used that same one day supply and no hay rack, they were up to over 10 percent waste. So it doubles the waste if we don't have a hay rack or a feeding bale, a bale feeder versus where we do. Um, a number of producers over the years have, have called and said, well, I really don't want to start a tractor every day, so what are my options if I don't want to deliver feed every day? Well, they also looked at that here where they put out two, three, or four days worth of feed supply without a hay rack, and all of a sudden we went from 10 percent waste to 25 to 35 percent waste. So I would say when hay is running $100, $150, $200 a ton, that difference of 15 to 25 percent waste adds up in a big hurry. Can probably, you can afford to start a tractor every day for that cost. They also, uh, in a study in Alberta, looked at, well, what about if we try to unwrap it or process it or unroll it on the snow? And of course, this study was done in Canada, but in Canada, when we're on frozen snow, their processor, bale processor that processed it as it unloaded, had a 19 percent loss. And where they just unrolled the big bales in a strip down the field, they had a 12 percent loss. So it's kind of in the middle. There's some loss to it. Um, but it probably works pretty well if we have an operation that maybe doesn't use a full bale or, or, or use feed supplies in full bale quantities. Just to put a little bit of a dollar value to this, I just said if, if hay is running $200 a ton and we use a ton a day, we're still seeing about $10 worth of waste if we feed every day with a hay rack. We jump that to $20 a day of loss if we feed it without a hay rack. And when we jump to those systems of two or three days hay and no, no hay rack or feeder system, we're looking at $50 to $75 per day in additional feed cost that we're paying but the cows aren't consuming to help produce that calf. If we put it down into the, the process one and look at it from that standpoint, we're looking at $38 in loss where we process onto the snow and $24 if we unroll it onto the snow. But again, I want to point out that's on frozen ground with snow. So if we're looking at our uh, early winter, late winter season here in Iowa and the mud we deal with, that would compound that greatly.